Hello friends, we are discussing the next methodology for the measurement of high current. In this lecture, we'll be discussing the measurement of high alternating currents, that is AC current, but at normal frequency called power frequency. And as per Indian standards, that frequency value is 50 Hertz. <music> Let us check what the first method says. Basically, here there is no much discussion required. As I already said, the resistive shunt that is what one of the method that can be used, and it is similar to the measurement of high DC current. So that resistive shunt method is similar to the measurement of high DC current. Now, in this case, what we have, you can see the diagram. This diagram shows the construction of a current transformer a construction of current transformer this current transformer is circular that is toroidal in nature one side of it is wound with certain number of turns of coil you can see there are number of turns few of number of turns are placed on one side of the core so this core consists of some turns of coil which allows a current to pass of very small value which passes through an ammeter which is used for the measurement of power frequency AC current. Now we have this coil which is wound on the core called as secondary winding. To this current transformer, this winding acts as secondary winding and hence the conductor which is surrounded by this hollow core, that conductor acts as the primary winding or we can say that that conductor is referred as the primary conductor. So this primary conductor experiences the first current called as primary current. So high AC current high AC current passes through this conductor, which is to be measured for that purpose. When a core is placed, this number of turns, if it is say N2 or NS, primary number of turns or conductor is say NP, then we can write the equation as IP upon IS is equal to n s upon n p that from transformation ratio k is equal to n2 upon n1 is equal to v2 upon v1 is equal to i1 upon i2 and hence this particular equation is developed based on the quantities which are written here as primary current is represented by ip instead of i1 so therefore it is ip so you can see i1 and ip both are analogous I2 is replaced as IS as it is indicated as IS in the diagram. So therefore, this IS indicates the secondary current. So what we have, we have IP upon IS is equal to N2 upon N1. So N2 be the number of turns on secondary, that is NS. Divided by N1 means number of turns or the conductor number of turns on primary, that is NP. So if I have to find the value of IS, I can write the expression IS is equal to cross multiplication gives me IP multiplied by NP upon NS. So this gives me the value of the current measurement or by using an ammeter, the direct current can be measured. The value of this IS that is secondary current is much, much less than the value of primary current. So this measurement of power frequency but high current is generally done using current transformers. As a use of current change involves unnecessary power loss. So whenever we have a use of resistance, that resistance gives power loss. The equation is P is equal to I square R. As this resistance involves P is equal to I square R. And therefore, this power loss takes place in the resistance if it is used 
as shunt resistance case. So therefore, instead of having that, a current transformer is preferred. And that provides not only it prevents the power loss, but also gives the electrical isolation that isolates from the high voltage circuit in the power system. So this particular circuit, that conductor is called as a high voltage circuit, a high voltage circuit. And this particular CT, as it is hollow, and there is no connection between this core and the current carrying conductor, therefore we get the isolation called as electrical isolation. This particular method can be used even for few EHV systems, that is extra high voltage systems, which are quite different from the conventional designs as they have to be kept at very high voltages from the ground. So this is what the method of the measurement of high AC current under power frequency, that is 50 hertz frequency. It's also modified. That modified circuit is shown in this case. So this is called as a new scheme which is introduced of current transformer measurements called as or it introduces called electro optical technique that method is called as electro optical technique what does electro optical technique consist of you can see there are 10 different parts or numbers written on this particular circuit whatever the power frequency 50 hertz power frequency high current high ac current which passes through this particular conductor is going to be measured with the help of electro, but optical technique. So this one number indicates the extra high voltage conductor. There are CT displays number two and three. Then there is need to have the potential transformer. This potential transformer is named as numbered as four. So it means the electrical supply is taken from this particular end. Then there is number five. This box indicates there is analog signal to di digital signal converter. So it converts that analog signal into the digital signal. So this converter converts this signal and it is given to the next stage that is to the digital to analog converter. But there is a protection, there is a protection used called insulator. So it prevents from the leakage of the current. There is optical gas, glass fiber which is used. So this seven number is optical glass fiber which connects this A input to D output and that D output is given to this D input. That is D2A, that is a digital to analog converter. And here we get that analog signal. So that passes through this particular optical glass fiber. There is a resistance used. There is a resistance used through which we find the flow of current. So this resistance get excited, get energized from this potential transformer. Now, whatever the analog current, analog signal we are getting, that is to be measured with the help of some instrument and the instrument which is used here for the display is cathode ray oscilloscope that is CRO. So this CRO is nothing but the recording display. A voltage signal proportional to the measuring current that is capital I is generated and is transmitted to the ground side so it is basically transmitted to this ground side, so lower side, through an electro-optical device. And therefore, that technical is referred as electro-optical technique. This light pulses proportional to the voltage signal are transmitted by a glass fiber, that is number seven in the numbers. So glass optical fiber, that bundle, which is used to transmit the signal to a photo detector and that is converted back into an analog voltage signal. So this get converted again back to the analog signals. 
the accuracy which we get, which we receive from that is plus minus 0.5% and is obtained at a rated current as well as high short circuit currents. It means that heavy short circuit current can also be measured. The required power for the signal converter and optical device are obtained from the suitable current. That is, we have a current transformer. We have a current transformer that is say three and voltage transformer that is four. So this, this particular uh, power, power is nothing but the voltage into current. So whatever the power is required for the conversion purpose is given to that signal converter from the current transformer and potential transformer. So this is what the method which is used for the measurement of high AC current under normal power frequency of 50 Hertz. So in this case, resistive shunt is one of the method which is already discussed in case of high DC current measurement. Then there is a current transformer that is generally preferred that gives the isolation and there is advancement to that current transformer that is by using this optical electro optical device we can have the measurement and display on CR. So hopefully you understood these two methods of measurement of high AC current under power frequency that is 50 Hertz. So thank you so much guys.